In this video, we're gonna talk about the old HyperTuff again, the HyperTuff brushless, this time 20 volt. This is the only brushless 20 volt HyperTuff tool I've ever owned. The other 20 volt tools were all pretty bad. Will this one be pretty bad? Let's find out. So this episode is all about this HyperTuff guy right here. What's he all about? How good is it? Well, let's see how big it is first. The model number for the HyperTuff is AQ78020G. With our four amp hour battery we're testing with it, it's about nine and three quarter inches tall, and we're about six and one quarter inches long. With the battery, the HyperTuff weighs in at four pounds, 3.4 ounces. Our second contestant is this Ryobi compact impact wrench. As far as I know, it's relatively new. I got it on promotion for Black Friday. It's model number PSB. IW25. Counting our four amp hour battery, it's about nine and five eighths tall and five and five eighths long. The Ryobi weighs in at four pounds, one ounce. Our last contestant is this guy, the Timu Special, the JSD Hope with JSD Hope battery. And it's durable and it's lithium and it's a lot of milliamp hours. I don't really see much of a model number on this. With its battery, the JSD Hope is 10 inches tall, five and a quarter inches long, and weighs in at a very robust three pounds, 7.7 .7 ounces, which makes it the lightest and one of the most compact of the day. But is it powerful? Mm. And for our most recognizable brand, everybody knows when they go out and see the JSD Hope brand in action, they can say, hey, wow. I recognize that. That's JSD Hope. Get them at your Timu today. Not awful. Let's get our second run under our belts here. And our final run. So the old JSD may not be the most powerful, but it's definitely Consistent, staying right near 1500 PSI on all three tests. Now we have the four amp hour Makita battery to go with the JSD Hope because that's what they're built for. You always know you've got a JSD Hope when you see a weird looking thing with a Makita on it. You know it's JSD Hope or Heimendinger or one of the other ones. All right, let's get her in there and see if it improves the situation. So the four amp hour Makita battery didn't improve the situation. Actually, it reduced it down to 1400 PSI, but perhaps a five or six amp hour battery would have done a little bit better. So let's move on to our first run with the Ryobi. So Ryobi bests the Hyman Dinga JSD Hope by just a little bit. Let's see how it does in the second run. So it's back down with the JSD Hope at 1500 PSI on the second run. All right, here's Ryobi's last run. And Ryobi's back up to 1575, finishing above the JSD Hope again. But here's the one that we're all curious about, the new HyperTuff Brushless. So 1875 is definitely besting the other two by a significant margin. Let's see if it's consistent. All right, here goes dyno run number two. So a little surprise from the HyperTuff coming in at 1925, so even stronger. Might as well go ahead and just do dyno run number three. Yeah, 
even taking into account that this is forward, the 2200 over the Ryobi and even the JSD Hope is a big surprise to me. Let's see what these three did on their best runs. We'll put them all on the screen at the same time. Here's what I want you to notice watching this. You see the HyperTuff is way out ahead, but the Ryobi takes a big jump over the JSD Hope out of the gate. So that RPM lets it get a lot more power there right in the early going. The HyperTuff is just way over the top of everybody else, followed by the Ryobi and the JSD Hope. My favorite light of the three of these is definitely the Ryobi. It has the tri-beam LEDs. I just really, really like that light. All these different impact wrenches are brushless. This is the OnePlus HP from Ryobi. This one has a nice touchpad here. And the nice thing about it is that uh, you don't have to hit the trigger first. This is the JSD Hope. You see its light is just one of those lights at the base. It's kind of average. You do have to hit the trigger to use the electronic controls on the JSD Hope, unlike the Ryobi, which is nice. And of course, like I said, they're all brushless, which is also very nice. But like I tell people, brushless doesn't mean it's going to be more powerful. It just means it's brushless. You can see me manipulating the JSD Hope's pad right there. Then we can move on to the HyperTuff. The HyperTuff has the, another average light right there. Nothing special. You also have to hit the trigger for the HyperTuff, which is brushless, as you can see, because the control pad doesn't work otherwise. Ryobi RPM readings. Low speed. Second speed. High speed. Lowest working speed. JSD Hope on low speed. and high speed. Not much of a difference. And lowest working speed. Hyper tough on low speed. Medium speed. And high speed. Lowest working speed. In the next test, we're going to use these impact wrenches to drive this giant big honking lag screw as it's professionally called, which is eight inches long and a half inch wide. We have the JSD Hope on the right. The Hyper Tough will be in the center and the Ryobi is on the left. Now take into account the RPM measurements and the power measurements. Let's see how that plays out in a real life test One, like this lag screw. Two, three. So even though the Ryobi is less powerful on the PSI test than the HyperTuff with that extra RPM, they come in neck and neck during this test. And I did want to mention, almost forgot, that the JSD Hope has a nice feature. Like the Bosch Freak, you can put sockets on it, half inch drive, or you can put bits in it because it has a hollow section on the inside suitable for bits. So that is kind of nice. So it's like an impact driver slash impact wrench, which is desirable, I guess. What do you think? As many of you recall, we're giving away this Ryobi. 
brushless impact driver with battery and charger. And the winner of this particular wonderful tool is Joseph Almatran. He was a commenter on that video where I was giving it away. And I want you to know, Joseph, to email me at ZacharySiota at gmail.com as seen on a screen right here to collect your prize. So as you recall, we just screwed in a giant honk and lag screw, and that took a lot of torque in the forward direction. So let's take it out and see which one of these three impact wrenches is best at breaking this thing free and getting it out the fastest. So you can see the Ryobi has a lot of torque going in the reverse direction, and it's demonstrated here with a decisive victory over HyperTuff, and the Team UJSD Hope comes up very far behind as it did in the previous test, just lacking in the power that the other two have and the RPM that the Ryobi has. Let's take a look at our findings here. In the size categories, height goes to Ryobi, length goes to the JSD, Five and a quarter inches is a pretty short impact wrench. Weight also to the JSD, three pounds, 7.7 .7 ounces. And unfortunately that smaller size also means smaller power because the JSD had 1500 PSI compared to HyperTuff's 2200 PSI. Features and comfort is a subjective rating, but I rated Ryobi the first for comfort in the grip. The features were a little bit better than you didn't have to hit that trigger to access the electronic controls, which is a nice convenience thing. And just Ryobi feels better. And you could see, if you go back and look at the video, the HyperTuff dances quite a bit. It's a little bit harder to handle than the Ryobi. And honestly, the Ryobi feels the best as far as quality of construction. It just feels like a professional tool. The other ones... They feel like they're from Timu, basically. As far as RPM, the JSD actually had the best low RPM control. I could hold around 120 RPM steady, which is nice for delicate work. In the high RPM category, Ryobi had a significant advantage with 400 RPM over the competition at 2,797 RPM. I believe that helped it during some of these lag screw tests where it looked like it had less power, but it's actually doing more work when you combine that torque with the RPM. In the lag screw test, Ryobi and HyperTuff were pretty much deadlocked. I did give Ryobi first place, HyperTuff second place, even though only a second separated them. I could have just as easily let them share first, but I decided I wanted to be straight up first and second. JSD made it very easy to put them last being over twice as long as the competition. The reverse lag screw was a little bit closer, but still Ryobi pulled out a decisive victory at 27 seconds, followed by HyperTuff at 40 seconds, and JSD bringing up the rear at 53 seconds. When it comes to the cost of these tools, it gets a little bit murky. The HyperTuff is pretty easy. I can look on the Walmart website, there's a kit, they sell it for $69, and we're good. When I went to go look up the JSD data, you see on the screen I have not applicable written here. It's because it says it's discontinued. I just bought it and it's discontinued. Now you can buy ones that look just like it, but this particular model, I guess, is discontinued, which is kind of strange, but I guess that's going to be Timu for you. And that's kind of what you get into when using web services like Timu to order things. <laughs> Could be a problem. But the Ryobi, I tried to find its price too, and it is out of stock. It doesn't even have a link to the actual page at Home Depot. It was $139. I looked on my receipt because it's stored online because I'm Home Depot Pro for whatever that's worth. But I can see that it's out of stock, but it probably will come back into stock, I'm guessing, because the promotion probably drained all the inventory. That's my guess. I don't know for sure. If you do know, put it in the comments below. So the total score, the lowest is the best. That means they finished lower because first is lower than third. So 24 points go to HyperTuff. 17 to Ryobi and 26 to JSD, meaning Ryobi is our winner. Let me know if you agree in the comments. You can see the average finish, 1.5 for Ryobi, 2.2 for HyperTuff, and 2.4 for JSD. JSD was helped out a lot by its size. HyperTuff had a lot of power, and the price was really good. But Ryobi 
it, it kind of shine with that extra RPM doing that extra amount of work. You wouldn't think based on that PSI test that they were going to be as good, but they did actually do very, very well. Thank you for watching the video. My name is Zach Ciotta. I try to do these type videos every week. We have a lot of great content coming up, including subcompact drills, full size drills, uh, small compact impact drivers, circular saws. I want to do five and a half inch circular saws, but I'm trying to get the lineup straight. Hart just released a new brushless five and a half inch circular saw for some reason, Hart released one, but I'm curious about it. I already have the skill. It's 12 volt, Hart's 20 volt. See, there's, we got to figure out which one to do. There's a DeWalt one out there. Milwaukee makes them. It's tough. It's tough. Guys, I really appreciate you watching this. If you want to support the channel, very easy to do so by putting a like on this video. Very easy. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and have your notifications enabled so you get notified when the video comes out. I try to do once a week. If you want to support a step further, you can become a Subscribestar supporter or a channel member. Subscribestar and channel member, it's like being a Patreon supporter. I like Subscribestar. There's links to all those in the description. You can support the channel for a few dollars a month and help out. I really appreciate that. It definitely makes all this stuff possible. I also have a podcast by the same name, Zach Talks Shop. Every week I'll come on there and talk about just a whole host of different things from tool sales to everyday life stuff to what I had for breakfast. It really could be anything and hopefully it's entertaining and you guys get something out of it. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you for watching this video and continuing to support my channel. And God bless every single one of you. You might not know this, but I have some other channels, including a mad science channel, which I do older vintage tools and all sorts of unapproved builds. There's also a shorts channel where I put up short form content like Instagram, except I don't go there. Or maybe one of these two videos right here and or playlist will do it for you.